Hello, welcome to another Warframe chit chat. First, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers. I finally hit 200 subs and it feels amazing. So in this video, we are talking about corrosive projection and something very cool about shattering impact. But before we start, we have to understand armor and how the game mechanic works in order to really understand its effects. Armor are mostly used by Grenier's and depending on whether it's an alloy or fire armor, it could resist certain damage types. Armor scaled with the enemy's level, this is why Grenier's can get very tough at high levels, especially the heavy gunners and bombards. Keep in mind that all enemies has a base level, base armor and base health. You can find these information at wiki. And the armor is scaled as shown in the formula current level minus base level to the power of 1.75 divided by 200 plus 1 and finally times the base armor. Health is scaled by having the current level minus the base level to the power of 2 times 0.015 plus 1 times the base health. With the armor of the enemy's current level aka net armor, you can find out how much damage reduction is done on the enemy with this formula. Net armor divided by 300 plus net armor. Because of this formula, enemies with very high armor will seem to stop scaling as effectively as enemies with lower armor. For example, an enemy with 10,000 armor and one with 100,000 armor will have only around 2% difference in damage reduction amount. Whereas an enemy with let's say 50 armor and one with 500 armor will have about an extra 50% damage reduction. Effective health or EHP in short is the total amount of damage the enemy could take before dying and it's affected by the current health and the damage reduction. For example, if it has 1000 HP and 50 damage reduction which is about 100 armor, to kill it you will need to do 2000 HP worth of damage and that is its EHP. The formula is as shown which is net health divided by 1 minus damage reduction. Let's do one simple calculation on a commonly used enemy for testing the corrupted heavy gunner. It has a base level of 8, a base armor of 500, and a base health of 700. What is its current armor, health, damage reduction, and EHP if it's at a level 135? The answer is... Voila! So as you can see at level 135, it would have 12.5k net armor, 98% damage reduction, 170k HP and 7,262k EHP. In a way, you can say that its armor gave it 7.1 million extra HP. So if you can remove its armor, you would have done 7.1 million damage. And you only need to do the remaining 170k damage to kill it. I hope you're still with me so far because here comes the important part about corrosive projection. If you have one corrosive projection on, it is a minus 30% armor. In this case, the net armor will be 8,758 and the new damage reduction amount will be 96.7%, only about a 1% difference. It is true that if you convert it to EHP, you would have done about 1.5 million HP, but I wouldn't focus on it after all a single corrosive proc can do just as much. At really high levels, unless you have all 4 corrosive projections to reduce the armor by 100%, this could be quite a waste of an aura slot. For example, just so you can see it obviously, I'm going to exaggerate. If you have 3 corrosive projections making it a minus 90% armor, and you enter an endless mission with enemies armor let's say 300,000 which makes it a damage reduction of 99%. Having the minus 90% armor and now they have only 30k armor and their damage reduction is still 99%. Do you see what I mean? For extreme cases, corrosive projection is not good unless you can achieve minus 100% armor. But in general and low level missions, even with a corrosive projection, it will help a bit. But to me, it's not worth the aura slot or worth switching over on and off. You can also achieve 100% armor reduction if you have 3 corrosion projection and 3 coaction drift. Since it's an aura, 
it will only increase the 30% strength by 15% making it 34.5% and only with 3 of these you can hit the 100% mark. Now let's talk about the best ways to remove armor completely and permanently. Corrosive projection is permanent and complete but getting all members of the squad to use it can be challenging. Corrosive procs is also permanent but it can really be hard to remove armor completely because each proc removes 25% of its existing armor making it less and less effective after each proc and never reaching a complete zero in theory and also I have never managed to do it either. There are some Warframe skills and arguments like Ashes Seeking Shuriken and also Frost's Avalanche and many more can completely remove armor but not permanently. So this is where Shattering Impact comes in and if you're going for an extreme Grenier mission, you should definitely consider this. The first problem with this mod is that many may not fully understand how it works because of the description being very vague. First of all, it says IMPACT in capital letters from melee attacks reduce enemy armor by 6. The first time I saw this, I thought it had to be an impact proc. Turns out it's not and any weapon with even the slightest impact damage will cause the debuff every single hit. The second thing that isn't clear is how it reduced 6 armor from let's say the corrupted heavy gunner. So we talked about it, it has a base level of 8 a base armor of 500, at level 135 it would have an armor of 12.5k. So simple right? If I'm fighting with a level 135, I just take 12.5k divided by 6 and I would know that I have to hit it for 2084 times to remove its armor, right? Nope. Apparently, its armor reduction is directly reducing its base armor, which means the 500 armor not what the armor is at its level. But still, I guess 500 divided by 6, you still need to hit it like 84 times. But we will see how fast it takes to do just that, in a moment. Take note that heavy gunners and bombards are the few that has the highest armor in the game, a simple butcher has only 5 base armor and even if it's a level 999, one hit is all it takes to totally strip it off its armor. One good reason for removing armor especially for Grinius is to bypass the alloy and ferrite resistance and straight away mod it to attack its clone flesh which is weak against viral that reduces health by 50% when proc. If you want to play with Shattering Impact, you want to have very fast attacks. I'm going to show you a demonstration between a dual Zoran, which is a rank 2 weapon with crappy stats but very fast attack, and a very strong weapon in the game, the rank 13 weapon Galatine Prime on a level 135 corrupted heavy gunner. So now let's head over and take a look. Here it is, the Gatoline Prime modded the way we talked about in a previous video. Don't forget that this is one of the strongest weapon in the game. So here we go summoning the corrupted heavy gunner at level 135. I would summon a, a, a something stronger but apparently that is the maximum level that I have at the moment. There you go, there is the slam attack and knockdown. Alright. And it's dead. Okay. So I think that is about 12 seconds. I'm gonna do this again just to show uh, the consistency and that it did not die because of pure luck or something like that. So here we go again, round 2. Oh, it's slam. Oh, a ground finisher. Another slam. Another ground finisher. Another slam. And it's dead. Okay, so this is the Galatine Prime. Now over here is the Dual Zorin and I didn't mod it really perfectly because I don't have that much capacity. I only use a Oricon Catalyst on it. Um, no Forma has been used. So here we go. Do keep in mind that this is a rank 
two weapon and any uh, new player could get it quite easily on top of that uh, the stance is not a rare stance uh, and it's actually the better stance I believe because if you manage to pull off one of its combo correctly it could attack really really quick like a lot of hits Okay, I'm gonna do it the second time. Here we go. I'm gonna be honest, this frame is like really, really squishy and it's not really good for this kind of testing. This is not my first time taking this. Yeah, so you don't do much damage until his armor is gone and then you really eat it, eat it through his flash. Alright, I believe those were about 15 seconds. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing but only with a stronger weapon. It is also a dual sword weapon and it's the Prisma Cleavers. Okay, let's see how this one does. So exactly the same modding. Whoop, whoop. Okay. There we go. Okay, this is definitely eating in a lot quicker, even before the armor is taken away. Oh, there you go, it's dead. Now, for comparison's sake, I will have to make one where I do not have the shattering impact, so that you guys could see everything's modded the same again, but just without the shattering impact. Uh, anyway, I like to say that uh, I hope you guys. Uh, like the video and uh, I hope the video helped you in some way and if you manage to make a new meta build or something uh, don't forget to make a video out of it and tag me in there because I would love to see it okay so have a great day and um, don't forget to subscribe bye bye Submission, I'm fucked